Another episode of Under Cover Coven. Ding! <laughs> it's funny because we said we were going to start with ASMR and that's nothing like ASMR. <laughs> we improvised. We panicked. We, yep. We panicked. Welcome back to another episode. <laughs> Welcome to Under Cover. I fucking hate ASMR. I hate it. It makes me so uncomfortable. It makes me really uncomfortable. How about you? It's How weird, like, like the ones that are about licking the ears, and they sound licking, like licking your ears. No, I actually hate. I know that I I feel like you are the kind of person who would like it. Not for the reasons people think that ASMR is made for. Me? Yeah. Do you? I like a type. Yeah, there's different kinds, right? Yeah, I like the ones when they tell a story, but they're telling the story, but in a whisper. That's it. I don't like the sounds. I don't like like, when they eat food or things like that. I just like when they're they're telling a story, but whispered. Yeah. You know, I it. hate it. For some reason, I hate any type of ASMR that I've ever... And I'm, I'm curious enough and I, <laughs> I that I put myself through it and actually, like, YouTube, like, looking YouTube for it. Right. Um, for different types of ASMR. And it just... The type of thing, it just makes my skin crawl. Like, it makes me itch. I fucking hate it. It's just that it's so awkward. Like, have you seen the role-playing ones? No. Oh, like okay. the um. There's this girl. What's her name? She like she went viral, and it's like this like twelve year old girl. She said, she said she has red hair. Oh, but now they're saying that that was like sexual harassment or something like that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. She had like a whole but... channel, and she was she was so nice. Like she was just having fun, to be honest with you. But right. she had a bunch of them that it was like, um. ASMR of like a rude flight attendant or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's awkward. Like I, I saw somebody that was like, okay, uh, ASMR a of a uh, eye doctor. No. Oh. So they would like, be just... like. So they would be like, hey, okay, it's your turn. Please sign your name here. What and the I'm like, fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Why are you whispering if we're in a doctor's office? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's just weird. ASMR it's weird. At the library. <laughs> yeah. Why are you whispering? Because you cannot. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> it's I don't know what it is, but it's from a while back, and I think it was. Some sort of commercial. I can't remember what for. But it was like this girl comes into a library and she goes, um, she goes, excuse me, can I have a burger and fries? And the girl at the counter goes, um, this is a library. And she goes, oh, sorry. Sorry. Can I have a burger and fries? life of me like what type of commercial it was i can't remember but it's just it's funny (laughs) that's funny no the one i discovered recently with asmr is a doggy so there was a doggy it was a like a i think it was a shiba and they gave it they gave the dog food Mm -hmm. and then and you could hear the, the dog smelling 
smelling the food, and then they gave them celery, and he would like crunch on the celery. Oh. And it was like the cutest thing. Uh, if you know it's a dog, because if you know, if you think it's a human, then it's weird of somebody going. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think that's what makes me uncomfortable. Is just, but in, with any animal, like I wouldn't care. Is it that you know what you know what makes it awkward for me is that I okay I I'm listening to somebody do this, but in my mind I immediately imagine them doing it. And it just makes it so awkward. It's cringy, yeah. It's cringy. Yeah. So we're not going to do this. No, we're no. not going to do that on this channel. But if you do like animal ASMR, I recommend um, Jenna Marble's video of oh, yeah. every time they recorded Kermit <laughs> when he was being nasty or crying for no reason. <laughs> Yeah. That was, like, some really good unintended anim- like doggy ASMR, and it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. And there's also, I, I don't know the channel, but there's a true crime ASMR. What? On YouTube, and it's a, it's a person telling a story, like, about Charles Manson, for example. Yeah. So they go like this, and they talk to you about Charles Manson. What? And it's really enunciated. I'd rather stick to regular podcasts. Thank you. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a an ASMR video of being abducted by aliens. Oh, maybe that's somebody's thing. Take I don't know. that, you doctor's know. office ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on another level, bitch. Exactly. It's above you. No, that's weird. <laughs> It's it's above me. It's, it's above me. Um, no, but it's so weird. Like, have you? They put like mascara. I don't know. Oh, did, did you see the one other girl doing makeup? But she would like eat the makeup. Oh, she's so fucked up. She eats glass on her channel. This is like a young uh, girl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's ate glass and paper. Like, it, I, it's just so fucked up. Like at this point, she's just not. No, I mean, I'm praying for her. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even regularly pray, but you know. Um, oh no. Anyways, oh, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm a bit sick. Just letting everybody know if I if I sound a little bit nasally or if you hear like toilet paper ASMR, it's because I'm sick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you know, if you like it and you're down, whatever floats your boat. You know, there's things for everybody. That's yeah. why there's so many fetishes out there. That's true. Like, if you're into balloons and balloons make you, like, horny or whatever, good on you, you know? I'm not here to kink shame. Yeah. Whatever floats your little boat. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> Back to normal. Regular programming. <laughs> programming. Um, I want to shout out Peter. Hello, Peter. Hello. <gasps> What happened? Oh, sorry, there's a f- bug flight in my room. Oh, I was like, what happened? It's very tiny, so I'll just let it fly. Oh, okay, as long as it's not a spider. Welcome back! <laughs> I mean, sorry, <laughs> hello, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mess. Hi, Peter. And Hi. also, I wanted to invite anybody who listens to this podcast and actually likes what we're doing, uh, please visit our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash undercovercoven, and see if you can please support us so we can actually get mics and not use our iPhones, yes. as we have done for the last 32 episodes. And then maybe <laughs> we can start doing some proper ASMR. <laughs> and then we can do normal, good AS. I don't know what's good, what good ASMR is. I don't know is. what, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Me neither. Maybe we should. Maybe there has to be. Maybe we should do like paranormal ASMR, like a ghost. And or... then the ghost said. <laughs> Boo. That's what ghosts say. Boo. Boo. <laughs> uh, maybe and then there's like I don't know, like maybe there's people that like like when there's spiders crawling on them, so we could go like. Don't. I don't know. Uh, you don't know what people like. Or like people that like like the wings of a bug, which freaks me the fuck they're out. They're crawling on my face. No, they're not. I can see you. <laughs> <They are. laughs> I had a nightmare last night. 
And then I could do aliens. Yes. So I can be like, we are aliens. We want to abduct you. Okay. I want to abduct you. Pick me up. <laughs> Get in, bitch. We're going shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this, is what just, this is the episode. This is what we're gonna do. Forget about what we're gonna talk about. No, I don't care about, you know, what we're gonna talk about. No. I just wanna do this. I just wanna do this. <laughs> the whole time. Let's just whisper the entire thing. And just. No, I couldn't. My voice would like. <laughs> no. I can't. <laughs> Please visit our Patreon. We. Please. we, we, we we seriously don't do this every episode, but please consider If you're it. brand new here, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, but here, also, please stay. <laughs> if you're new here, I would suggest skipping this episode and going to, like, something older, and you can see, except, except like, the first one. <laughs> you can see that we actually kind of care about what we're doing, and yeah. we don't do these kind of stupid things, you know, <laughs> every episode. Mm-hmm. Not every episode. Some episodes. Some. Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and everybody else who's listening who might be new, please rate, review. You don't have to subscribe, but please rate and review and please tell us your honest thoughts about... Please don't comment on the audio because we know it sucks. But maybe like listen to older ones and tell us what you think. Yeah. Please. 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 <laughs> yeah, See, I'm we don't, sure we're going to convince them with that. We're, we don't do this every I swear we don't do this every episode. Okay, Just when so, we smoke weed. I mean, what? I haven't smoked weed, so <laughs> I don't know. No, me neither. Okay, so... <clears throat> I promise. Today, today we are going to talk about a theory slash, mm. no, it's a theory. If, that, it's a theory. <laughs> it's a theory that uh, Ale told me about that I didn't know. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So Ale, would you like to start? Yes, I will. So today we're going to talk about the smiley face killings slash killers Or sometimes referred to as the smiley face murders. Or alleged murders. So. The smiley face murders. (laughs) is the alleged murder. So it's the alleged murders of a number of young men found in the water across the Midwest of the the states. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. From the 1990s all the way to 2010. Um, It is speculated that these young men did not actually drown as stated by police but instead were victims of foul play and, gr- and, and gruesome murders. So the smiley face factor. So these were a bunch of men. I think it's over 40 young men that were found mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, drowned in, mm-hmm. um, in rivers. In this, um, I think it was around 11 states across the U.S., across the yes. Midwest. Um, and then the smiley face factor came in um, when it was made public by the police that they discovered graffiti in the form of a smiley face near each location where they think the killer or killers allegedly dumped the bodies um, in at least a dozen of the cases um, of these drowned young men. So that's what the... Uh, so basically, it's just drowned young men that um, the families believe. And there's two detectives who we're going to talk about them um, in New York who believe that it wasn't actually just accidental drownings that were actually murders. And uh, right. they might be all connected to each other. Yes. Right. So the detectives' names, because I want to talk about them a little yeah. bit, uh, are... I have Gannon and Duarte, but I don't know the, the it's names. It's Kevin. I have it ready. Um, Kevin Gannon. <clears throat> and I didn't write the other guy's name. Why? <laughs> Isn't it like Anthony? Yeah, I think it's Anthony Duarte, but it's Kevin Gannon and Detective Duarte. I, I didn't write 
<laughs> okay, let's just call it. Oh my God, we suck. Yeah. Um, okay, so the the majority of the alleged smiley face victims were athletic, successful students, and were well liked by their peers. According to detectives Gannon and Duarte, these young men were most likely targeted because of these traits um, by killers that were like not good in school or not well liked, uh, unemployed, and maybe like unpopular. Mm -hmm. Along with these personal similarities, all of the victims disappeared after a night of drinking with friends and were later found in a body of water. So I'm going to start uh, naming some victims. The first one, uh, wait, when was this? Was Patrick McNeil. Uh, the smiley face murder theory begins on February 1987 with the disappearance of 21-year-old Fordman University student Patrick McNeil. A former captain of his high school football team, according to the New York Times, McNeil went missing after a night of drinking at a Manhattan bar. His body washed up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, almost two months later. Though the New York City medical examiner would later determine drowning as the cause of death, something didn't, like, the family wasn't, weren't, um, sure, weren't, like, ah, oh, ¿cómo se dice de acuerdo? Oh, my God. Now that you said in Spanish, I can't remember in English. The family didn't, like, agree. <laughs> agree, yeah. They, there you go. They did, like, That's agree. That's the Spanish word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> de acuerdo is to agree. <laughs> yeah. De acuerdo. Uh, so, the medical examiner determined drowning as the cause of death, but the family didn't agree with, with this mm -hmm. statement, and they believe Patrick's body showed signs of torture, and that it was first stored on land and later dumped in the river, mm -hmm. shortly before the body was discovered. McNeil was first of the four mysterious deaths, deaths of men in New York City over the following year, three of whom were discovered floating in waterways around five boroughs. Then came uh, Joey Labute. Uh, he was a homebody. He liked to play video games and watch Sleeping Beauty or episodes of Game of Thrones, which I think is really cute. Uh, he, liked to knit, he also liked to knit scarves. Uh, on Friday, ma Friday, March 4th, 2016, now we're uh, jumping to 2016, he went to the town of, he went on a night on the town uh, Union Cafe in Short North. Basically what happened is that they had some, they were having a meeting with some co-workers mm -hmm. there for pizza in Fabian's, and then he left after uh, 9 p.m., mm -hmm. Uh, Lebute tended to be more social after a couple of drinks, like some of us are. And friends and acquaintances chatted and danced with Lebute as the night went on. Justin Mertz, one of Lebute's best friends since sixth grade, tended bar that night and noticed that Lebute, um, noticed Lebute, but they had like a fight or something. They were like a little bit salty with each other. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really talk. <clears throat> but after that, after midnight, uh, these two people that were with the group, with Labute, um, wanted to leave. And they saw that Labute was lost in the crowded, in the crowded, like, full bar. Mm -hmm. And they tested him, and they were like, we're leaving. We'll see you, you know, the next day, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But Labute never responded. They hoped that Labute uh, decided to stay at, a, at an apartment of a friend who lived nearby, but they never saw him again. A few weeks later, on March 29th, Labute's partially submerged body was found in the Skioto River near the Skioto uh, Adubon Metro Park just south of downtown. <laughs> Sorry for the pronunciation. Then, uh, well, I have Brian Wellseen mm -hmm. that uh, went missing on the... 1st of January in 2000, after celebrating Y2K with his friends. Uh, he rarely partied, but this time he just wanted to go for drinks for New Year's, and he was, according to his friends, he seemed intoxicated at the end of the night. So, what's well seen told his friends that he wanted to call it a night after a few drinks and go back to the hotel where they were staying. One of Whitson's friends, Nick Young, stayed behind. During the drive, well seen started to throw up. His friend told him to get out of the car, but while he parked. 
Various witnesses outside the hotel saw Win Wilson vomiting in the street. His friends went up to his room and never saw Wilson again. When Young came back to the hotel around 4 p.m., Wilson was not in his room. He searched the area outside the hotel and he couldn't find Wilson and reported him around 1 p.m. That, that one is scary to me. Um, after ex extensive searches, Wilson's body was found 77 days later on March 17th. It had washed ashore in a beach in Gary, Indiana, 30 miles north, north I mean, mm -hmm. south of Chicago. Police said there were no signs of foul play and his death was ruled an undetermined drowning. And investigators believe he could have walked to the, le to the edge of Lake Michigan, a five-minute walk from the hotel, mm -hmm. and fallen in. His blood alcohol concentration was only 0.08%. And in this case, police have not found a smiley face near the death, the death site. Oh, okay. Then we have William Hurley, what, who went missing after a hockey game in Boston, Massachusetts. He went with two friends. He called his fiance and said he wanted to leave after the game. She, he walked outside while his fiance was going to pick him up, but when he, she came up to the stadium to pick him up, he wasn't there. So she called him, and she's like, where are you? And he says, I'm in 99 Nashua Street. And when she goes there, he's not there. He okay. just disappeared. And before, before when they had talked, he said that his battery was running out. But, yeah, they never found him again. Um, Mahoney, the... Claire Mahoney, the fiancé, drove around for an hour before returning home, hoping that Hurley had gotten another ride. Mm -hmm. But no, she was, he was reported missing a short time after that. Um, various searches were conducted. Six days after his disappearance, Hurley's body was found in the Charles River, close to where he asked Mahoney, his fiancé, to pick him up. Investigator says there was no signs of foul play and his death was ruled an undetermined drowning. So... The family, once again, didn't agree with what was going on, and Hurley's mother received a copy of the autopsy report and allowed a physician to analyze the report. And she found out that her son had reportedly suffered blunt force trauma to the head, uh, his eye socket, and behind his left leg. A smiley face was found painted near the river. Mm -hmm. Is this the boy that... <clears throat> I believe this is the boy that had... So, they... Asked to reopen the investigation because of that, because they said accidental drowning, but he was one of the few that they actually found foul play um, in his murder. And so, and well, now it's ruled a murder. But I believe he's, he's the one that had, um, or one of the boys had a clump of his, their own hair in his hand. Oh. So it looked like they pulled out a clump of their own hair while trying to, trying to struggle. Hmm. And so the parents, oh, wow. like, I yeah. Didn't... Sorry, there's a car outside playing one of my favorite songs. And I need to dance. What song? In a world so cold We're at a time on a highway to never hold on Hold on. It's Ocean Drive. Right, okay. No, I know. I know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay then um, this one is the one that freaks me out like the most. Yeah. Todd Gibb was 22 years old when he went missing in the early hours of June 12th, 2005 in a mm -hmm. bonfire uh, close to his home in Casnovia, Michigan. So he was reported missing later that day by his mother and a massive manhunt, manhunt ensued. Mm -hmm. Uh, the night that he disappeared, Gabe made several calls from his cell phone. One of them was to a friend who said she heard Gabe say, I'm in a field, before the call dropped. What? Gabe's body was found three weeks later in a lake that had previously been searched. His death was ruled an undetermined drowning, and oddly, Gabe's head and shoulders were sticking out of the water as if he'd gone for a swim, which is really weird. If somebody's yeah. drown, drowning. Uh, Gibbs' remains also had very little signs of decomposition, which would have been present if he had died the day he went missing. Mm -hmm. So 22 days before the recovery of his body. It's weird that 22 days 
before the recovery of his body, the decomposition would be like so much more than yeah. it actually was. Uh, alcohol and antidepressants were found in Gibb's toxicology screen, but it was reported that Gibb was not suffering any form of depression at the moment. A smiley face had been painted on a tree near where Gibb's body was found, and a smiley face sticker was later placed on his grave site. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the next one I have is Lucas Holman. He went missing on September 29th, 2006. Mm -hmm. He was 21 years old, and he was found uh, with various injuries on his head, hands, and arms, and they theorized that a mark on his forehead may have been a footprint that was a result of Homan being held down, like somebody had his huh. foot on, on the head. Yeah. Um, Homan was the eighth accidental drowning case in La Crosse over a nine-year period. A smiley face was found spray-painted near where the body was found, and he was also found um, on the shore of the Mississippi River. Then we have Tommy Booth, 24, disappeared January 19th, 2008, from a bar in Pennsylvania. He was found in full rigor mortis. That means it was 24 to 36 hours after he actually died. Um, and he was found also near a body of water. And the detectives that went to see the body noticed that the body appeared to be staged. Three sticks were st st strategically placed around his body, and they were shoe and drag marks in the soil. A smiley face was painted on a wall of the deck ne of of a bar near deck. So somebody, um, somebody placed them killed there. him yeah. and then dragged him to that place, and then put sticks around him for some reason. So the the latest one is Dakota James. And this is the one that I read is why... This is the one I read that is why they want to reopen the whole theory yeah. and the cases. Uh, Dakota James was 23 years old when he went missing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania yeah. uh, on January 25th, 2017, around 11.30 p.m. He, uh, James was walking to his apartment after mm -hmm. a night out drinking with his friends and co-workers. He never made it home. Uh, he was caught on a surveillance camera in a downtown area, and the footage shows that James was going into a dark alley, and that was the last time he was seen. Oh. So the following morning, James did not show up for work. His boss informed a family who filled a missing, report, uh, missing persons report mm -hmm. 72 hours later. James's parents uh, hired, a, hired a private investigator who organized a citywide search, mm -hmm which led to the discovery of James's body in the Ohio River on March 6, 2017, 40 days after he had disappeared. The police theorized that James fell into the river which, while crossing a bridge near the city center and drowned. They believed his body traveled for almost 10 miles and even went through a dam before its discovery. James's body, however, had no visible damage, which was highly suspicious because it had traveled through heavily trafficked uh, a heavily trafficked river and a smiley face was found spray painted on an underpass near where James's body was discovered. So that's the last one that like right now is happening. So the killings, um, according to Detective Gannon and Detective Duarte, the theory is that the victims were abducted and drugged before their murders and they told CNN that they think that these young men were given a substance that would render them unconscious and undetected by an autopsy and toxicology report. Yeah. In the last two cases, unexplained drugs were found in victims' bodies, including a date rape drug, G GHB. The remains are inconsistent because, you know, undetermined drowning isn't like a... a it's just weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, for example, when 23-year-old year Dakota James, the last one, was found by police in the Ohio River, his body had experienced mini minimal deterioration despite him being missing for 40 days. Yeah. Two weeks after 24-year-old uh, Tommy Booth went missing, his remains were found in a previously searched Pennsylvania Creek in full rigor mortis, which normally dissipates between 24 to 36 hours. Yeah. So, what the detectives think is that they were out drinking, they were mm -hmm. drugged, 
they were abducted. In some instances, they were tortured and then murdered. Yeah. The bodies were then put into frigid waters where they would float away from the crime scene and theoretically rinse the victim's body clean of mm -hmm. incriminating evidence such as fingerprints or DNA. And yeah, that's what yeah. that's what the theory that's what they think happens to these men. Yeah. yeah. So I guess from there we'll just jump into the theories um of who is might be doing this. So <clears throat> First, um, that comes to everyone's mind is a serial killer, uh -huh. which it wouldn't be weird, um, just considering like the map out of how, like they're all not all in one diff certain state or like in one certain city, but they are all around the same area. So if you think about it, like we were talking about it before we started recording, it was all in the Midwest, but it was all in like one, it was all in the top. Right. So like it's, it's, it's states the... that you can cross going through like one highway, one road, right. right? It's the top of the, it's the Midwest, but it's the top. And if you look at the way it's, it's the crimes were held, it's like a straight line. Yeah. Which is what we were talking about. It's not that impossible considering so many killers have done that would, before. Yeah, they go state to state killing. Exactly. So um, why they think it's a serial killer is because all young men had a similar social profile and they all disappear after a night of drinking with friends. Um, they had many similarities. They were all well liked. They were, they were popular, successful. They were all scholar. They were all white. You know, they were all, most of them were jocks. Um like very sporty kids with scholarships, you know, they did well in life and work with their families, you know, they were well stabled young men. So they were saying that maybe this, if it is a serial killer or a group of serial killers, which is the next theory, um, they would be uh, the complete opposite of right. what these young men were, which would be, you know, they didn't do well in school. They were probably unemployed and um, they were not popular, blah, 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 all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then it's a group of serial killers which is basically the same theory it's just that at this point I saw it on a way that you know like a like a web type of thing like a group or like some sort of like alliance or cult type of thing mm -hmm. like you know like a group on the internet and then that that's just what they do maybe it's like a fetish type thing or like you know I read on reddit somebody thought it was the incels because it would make sense that incels, mm. since they they, they 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 hate people that are superior to them and they're yeah. men, it would kind of make sense. It would make sense, but uh huh. But I feel I like know. the incels are they're they haven't been around for that long. I mean, yes, they have, but like the group itself, it hasn't. But it could mm. be a, a type of group like that. Yeah. Because it's not, I mean, it wouldn't be weird. You know what I mean? No. So, yeah. So, it could be a group of serial killers. And then the third and my favorite um, theory is a gang initiation. Okay. So, it would be most likely for gangs to spread out through different states. Different, like, the same gang, but, like, different groups of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because due to the evidence and like witness, um, accounts, like the very, very little witness accounts that they had, they think that it might be a type of gang initiation. So if somebody wants to be a part of the gang, this is what they have to do is, you know, they grab a, that one type of guy and then they kill them. You know what I mean? So I feel yeah, like it, yeah, yeah. it could be organized crime. Like it's at this point, it has to be. And it's very well thought out too, which is like, what? Yeah, it is very well thought out. Yeah, because who's going to think of like, okay, let's kidnap them, torture them, and then kill them. And then, oh, let's throw them in the water so like nobody knows. Like all of the evidence or like DNA stuff just rinses off. True. But is that, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about the whole thing that um, 
they were like preserved for a time before after they yeah. were murdered because it's weird that part is the one that yeah. that's weird to me so who knows what they were making them do maybe they weren't torturing them but maybe they were using them for something yeah yeah. I mean, it's a type of torture. But that's why I think the gang initiation is more likely to have happened. There's a certain, um, a couple of instances when they did see... Um, um, there were witnesses who saw, for example, one of the guys. They were both walking home from a party. And there was a girl walking just a little bit ahead of one of the guys that went missing. And she recalls seeing a car that stopped by him to ask him something. And she saw, like... She saw two girls sitting in the back and then two guys sitting at the fr- at the front. And they stopped. They asked him something. And then she just kind of looked back and kept walking. And okay. that those people in that car were never identified. They were never found. And then that was the last time anybody saw that guy, the, the, the boy. Hmm. Um, there was another one. One of the guys that went missing in New York. Um, also, of course, after a party, he was going home and... Somebody had recall. I think it was like a security guard recalls like very faintly um, seeing him with a group of people walking towards a van in an underground parking lot. And it was Halloween. So everybody had masks and costumes and stuff. So he couldn't like recognize any of them. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like that type of thing. That's what I, I feel like that would be if, if we're to be any of those three, like a serial killer, a group of serial killers or a gang initiation i think the gang is like the best bet yeah it could make sense it's just that i don't think it's i think it's too much to be like we were saying before Mm -hmm. i I think it's too much to be a coincidence yeah there's just too many similarities between the victims between the crime scenes Mm -hmm. between the the state of the bodies that I just I just don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence, and I f- I feel like at this point because they keep debunking it, and if you if you look online, like the de- debunks make sense, um, in a certain way, but at the end of the day, like there's way too many similarities. I just think that it's just lazy police work to call it an accidental, undetermined drowning. No, if they drowned like straight up you would be able to know by their bodies it's not undetermined they just drowned mm. but like that opens yeah. up the it's just the way i don't know i don't i don't i feel like they're not looking into it as much as they should have yeah no i agree yeah when there's too many coincidences like that like the, it's something bigger it's it's something bigger yeah it's not the first time, like, fuck, I don't remember his name. But there was, like, a serial yeah. killer, and everybody was like, oh, these are different serial killers. It mm-hmm. was just one person. So you never know, like, seriously. Yeah, that's true. You never, yeah. you never know. In uh, 2019, this year, in January, mm-hmm. Oxygen TV premiered Su- Smiley Face Killers, The Hunt for Justice. And it's a TV series. And um, it examines possible victims of the smiley face mm-hmm. murder theory and it looks at the, the cases and it like examines like the coincidences mm-hmm. that each case has but it, it kind of makes me sad that people online because i've read a lot about like comments yeah people are like laughing at this theory and they're like oh it's, it looks it seems like an like somebody on the internet made it up and it's like but there's so many there's so many coincidences yeah there's so many victims like i named a few there's but there's so, so much, more. yeah. Like it's there, just weird. there's so much. Like th- we're literally just brushing because it's such a long and like detailed. Because there's so many victims and there's so many similarities. So, so much more that at this point, I mean, we could have done it a couple parts episode, but I just feel like you you have you really have to look into it. If you if this is something that that um that you liked right now, like whatever we're telling you, you didn't know about it, um, go down that rabbit hole because it's very interesting. Yeah, I had no idea. And now they told me and I'm like, oh, I thought it was a somebody that like marked their victims with a smiley face. Yeah. And it turned out to be a whole theory. And I'm like, 
Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. I had no idea. Yeah. But no, it's weird. It's 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 a weird thing. And it should be looked into more. It should. I think it I'm I'm yeah. I'm happy that they're doing like a series on mm-hmm. it. I don't know if it's any good, but anyway. Yeah, we kind of found out <laughs> after that about yeah. the oxygen um is it a channel TV? or is it a website? Oxygen. Good question. I have no idea. Well, they have a series. I thought it was. Now. I thought it was like a YouTube channel. Wait, let me check. It could TV. be. Oxygen TV. I think it's a channel. It's a channel. Really? Yep. Uh-huh. Well, they have it's a series. Um, there is a um, mockumentary that I was telling Paula about, which pissed oh, me off yeah. when I watched it. It's yeah. called the, the the Smiley Face Killers. And it's, mm-hmm. um, I think it's the first thing that shows up when you look it up on YouTube. It was the first thing that showed up and I wanted to watch it really bad. And then I remember Ale telling me, yeah. don't watch it. Um, it's a mockumentary from 2014, which was... Um, it was promoted as a documentary about the killings, um, but then it just got really stupid towards the end and disrespectful, and I hated it. So the whole beginning of the documentary, mockumentary, sorry, is um, him going around, and those are factual interviews. So like, if you're really curious, they do detail and they talk about the whole case from like beginning to end and the victims and stuff. It's really interesting and. It's informative at the end of the day, it is. Um, the whole beginning and middle part are. And then towards the climax, they say how the guy who was doing like this, like New, New York, uh, NYU um, film student or whatever, he was um, doing this documentary and how he disappeared while trying to like investigate the murders. And, and then they show like footage of what they think it might be his murder. And it's just like, he gets choked and two people drag him out of a room. It's just really, really fucking stupid. And then I had to research. I was like, no way this happened. And it, when I looked it up, it was like, it, the first thing that show up, showed up was like fake. Like it wasn't yeah. a real documentary. And I thought it was really disrespectful. Um, but if it's a, if it's a NYU film student, that wouldn't be the victim profile. So it's even more stupid Yeah. to think about it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, he was popular, he whatever, he, yeah, whatever. I just, I found it so disrespectful um, towards the end. But they do give you some information in the beginning and towards like in the middle of it and about the victims and everything. And then there's real interviews with the families, which that's what I hate is like he had the real families like interviewed and then like he did that shit and everybody else hated it. It's not just me like being overly sensitive. Um, I understand the whole shock factor thing, but I think that specific thing was just an asshole move it wasn't shock factor and believe me i have seen gross movies that paula has made me seen before and those (laughs) are shock real shock factors this wasn't (laughs) this ain't it sis so this ain't it if you are interested to know what movies have traumatized ale thanks to me (laughs) let us know and i will make you a list i feel like we mentioned it in at least two episodes (laughs) but there's more there's more there's more and i've watched them all you know what so always makes myself. me think of you? Mm. Um, what's the one? Uh, something about a thumb. What's the one? A thumb. The angry inch. Uh, the angry. Oh my Hedwig god! and the angry inch. Yes. <laughs> about a thumb? No, no, no. It's just I was thinking something else. Um, oh. Inch. I don't know why I was thinking of a thumb, but that one. It's not a scary is, movie specifically. It's not a scary movie it's at not all. A, it's a musical. It's a musical. But every time I, 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 somebody mentions it or like I see it anywhere, I just think of Paula. It's just that I'm a huge fan. I love, I love Hedwig and the Angry Inch. It's like my favorite musical. <laughs> Six inches, four to five inches. But it's so good. There you go. Anyways. <laughs> That was really off topic, but anyway. <laughs> we were like, oh, gross movies. Hedwig and the Edge. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. no, I was just thinking, because every time I hear Salo or, like, anything else, I think of you. But then there's yeah. other movies that make me think of you, and that's one of them, so. Did you ever watch The Cannibal Holocaust? No, but I want to really bad. Okay. 
Yeah, that's a good one. That's a movie I'm it. down for. Like, I don't... You should watch it, but just know, and this is a warning for anybody else that's listening and hasn't seen it, there's, like, actual animal animals dying in the movie. I've heard that. Just to let you know. Yeah. There is. Yeah. Yeah. All the people are okay, but the animal they kill specifically in one part is real and that this kind of <clears throat> me <throat> I can watch I could watch like live leak videos of people getting run over and heads exploding and you know those really well produced terror um I, like ISIS videos where they show beheadings <laughs> they just seem very well produced ISIS videos <laughs> like fake yeah. ones you're saying or like the no. real ones. You you haven't seen those propaganda. I movies? saw ones one. I saw maybe one once because somebody like leaked it onto Facebook and it was just on my timeline. But I don't okay, look for them. I these aren't like I, I don't know if it's <coughs> ISIS specific, but there's like terrorist groups and they make really well produced like with drones and like production cuts and music in the background and Who like for knew? example. But wait, but they, they cut the head off of a guy for real? Yeah, of course. And they cut the head off and then they show like the head going down in like slow motion and and it's so well Produced. directed. It's like somebody thought this out and it's like, dude. They couldn't use this like this type of energy to do something good. <laughs> Come on. No. No, they couldn't. It's like in four K full H D like, you have to watch it in, like, a curved TV. Like, it's so... I'm not going to say it's cool, okay? I just think it's, it's like... It's very cinematic. <laughs> it's very cinematic for what they're doing. Yeah. It's just... It's like they're exaggerating too much. But anyway... So, they moved on from that whole, like, just four guys standing in a row, blindfolded, and then two ISIS guys standing on each side and trying to, like, speak over the the wind... Right, but no, these they're still they're still in that position, but it's more produced. No, it's cinematic. No, like it's imagine like, that. It's like a yeah, Quentin Tarantino exactly. movie. Exactly, it's like a whole Kill Bill situation. Yeah, you know. But but it's real. God, I'm, I'm gonna go to hell for laughing at that, but it's so true. Uh, but no, anyway, I, we're I laughing saying, at how ridiculous they are. Yeah, but I was saying I could watch. But... I could watch those videos like all day. But you put an animal. That's dying, mm. and I'll just, like, panic. I yeah. can't. I can't do it. No, yeah, me too. I can't do it. Even if it's fake, I feel like it hits oh, me hard even, even on fake. movies when I know that the, the animal didn't actually die. But So I wanted to tell you a tip that I actually told Fenya about. Fenya's our friend. That helped me a lot. So I'm watching Chernobyl, and they're talking about how, because of the radiation, they're going to have to start um, evacuating the city. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, okay, what about the pets? And they're like, pets, they have to die. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my God, they're going to show pets dying. And there's a site that I use a lot that's called doesthedogdie.com. And it's for people like me who get anxiety over those things. Mm -hmm. So you put in what you're watching. So I'm like Chernobyl. And they tell you in this episode at this time there's a massive pet shooting, which there was. And so I get to that point, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to watch it. And I couldn't watch it. It was just too painful. Aww. So thanks to doesthedogdie.com, I was able to know when to skip. Yeah. Because it would just, like, tear me to pieces. And it, it, it's not only dogs. It has, like, other triggers, like... If you don't like needles, or if you don't like blood, or if you really? don't like, I don't know, people dying. I don't know. Yeah, so, don't, yeah don't it has like all, that, but... all types of, um, of triggers. Oh. So if, you're, if you need it, doesthedogdie.com. I think for me, it might be just, apart from animals, because I think that's what sets me off, um... And not just dogs, it's like any type of animal, but... Same, same. Um, maybe vomit a little bit, but not always. Mm, depends on the situation. Depends on the situation, yeah. Like, for example, when I watched The Perfection. <laughs> yeah, it didn't hit me that hard. 
<laughs> oh, it hit me so hard. There's a part where, where there's more than vomit, but I was eating, and I'm like, mm, I don't want to eat anymore. <laughs> Yesterday, I was at, um, when was it? On Monday, I was at work, and one of the, the kids that work in the lot came upstairs with one of my managers, and they walk into the office, and this kid is, like, nervous. You can tell, and he has, like, a bandage wrapped around his finger. So he had cut himself, and okay. he was bleeding, but it wasn't, I feel like, it wasn't that bad. At least I didn't think it was that bad, but he was nervous. Like He was, like, literally this kid was looking up. He was, like, he was not looking at his hand. He was just, like, he, he was holding on to it, but he was, like, looking up. You can tell. Like, he sat down, and he was looking at the wall. Like, he turned around, he was looking at the wall, and he was just looking up. <laughs> and I was like, are you oh okay? God. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm okay. And so, like, my manager came to fill out, like, the li- like the um, liability or, like, incident forms, because he, like, um, I think it was a product that cut him. And so one of my other, one of the other supervisors comes in, and then she's like, oh, are you okay? And she gets all nervous. Right. And then the other manager that was in there walks out and he's like, yeah, I'm like, he was like trying not to look because they were helping him like clean out the ma- the bandage. And I'm just looking and I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, like, are you OK with that? I was like, yeah, I don't I don't care about blood. Blood does nothing to me. Yeah, it really doesn't. Um, And I'm just looking and they're like, are you OK with this? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I was like, I wanted to be a nurse. Like, I'm okay with blood. Oh, yeah. And she goes, you're okay with this type of thing? And I was like, it's just a little blood. Like, in my head, I'm like, how the fuck do you get your period? <laughs> you have to yeah, look up true. blood. I don't, I don't mind blood. But what I do hate with all my soul are needles. Which really? is funny. Because you have to Considering how pierced I am. And pierced. Exactly. And I hate needles with all my heart. And I should get vaccinated because I because of influenza. Yeah. And I haven't because I haven't got gotten the courage to go and get a shot. I can't. I'm too nervous. Really? Yeah, I don't like needles at all. All of the piercings I've gotten, all of them have been with my eyes closed. And I do not look. I can't. I love to look when they're taking blood out. But the thing is... It. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no, I um, can't. The thing with me is that, so at the beginning they thought, so my mom thought that I was scared of needles and that's why I would pass out every time they would take blood out. I, I, I actually faint and it wasn't mm-hmm. until I was completely fine and I was like, no, like, look, I am looking. There's nothing wrong. I really don't care. This, the nurse put the needle inside and I didn't even flinch. And she's like, no, she's fine. And two seconds after, she like put the cotton on my wrist. I was like, you're all good. I fainted. I started feeling faint. And so what happens is that every time they take blood out, my blood pressure drops. Oh, And so I right. faint. So now to take blood out, I really don't mind. And nothing happens to me as long as I'm lying down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I get blood drawn and I like have to breathe in and breathe out and just like do like this whole muscle relax- relaxation thing because I honestly get so nervous yeah. that I get dizzy and I get anxiety and I get mm. really nervous. Oh, it just all t- comes together. It all comes together. Yeah. So when wow. I got, when I, when I went to the doctors, when I got influenza, mm-hmm. uh, the doctor was like, okay, you need to get a blood exam. And I'm like, oh no, Why? no. And I swear to you, when I got told that until I got the exam done, mm-hmm. until the blood was drawn, my heart would not stop, like, Aww. rushing. I, it gets me so nervous. Yeah, I feel like... Did we did we conclude the episode? No! <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I finished my I'm theories. Like... <coughs> okay. We are so okay, sorry, I'll people. just... I'll just... Okay, just drink your water. I'll conclude the episode. So... Everybody, this is the conclusion of the episode. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please follow us on social media at Undercover Coven, on Instagram and Twitter, and you can email us at undercovercoven at gmail.com. And please forgive Ale for being high and no. lying about it. <laughs> I'm not. <coughs> 
You're dying. I am. You're dying. <laughs> and please visit our Patreon and check it out and see if you can support us. Anything will help. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week on another episode of Undercover Coven. Okay, say bye. Bye. Dígale <laughs> <Bye>. chao. Dígale <laughs> chao. Bye.